I call Dennis O'Rourke. Mr Speaker, I'm really quite saddened to have to speak on this bill today because I and we in New Zealand First don't see why it's needed at all. It's not clear why suddenly this legislation for a new flag has arisen under the leadership of the Prime Minister. The motivation is certainly not clear. For many years there has been sporadic public debate about whether New Zealand should consider changing its flag, but it's been at a very, very low level and it's nearly always been associated with the Republican movement. So is National really just taking the first step towards republicanism? Have they become infected with republicanism? And is that what they really are going to do later? Maybe this is just the first step. Or is it a career succession plan for John Key, first president of New Zealand? What really is the motivation for this? It's certainly not clear to us. At the very least, this is a way of diverting public attention away from much more urgent issues. It's a blue herring, Mr Speaker. On, and we should be looking much more at spending our energy and our money and our efforts on issues like child poverty, a rundown health service in many regions, a 1960s transport system on its last legs, an education system riddled with inequities and misguided investment, an undiversified economy far too dependent on one or two products, dairying and tourism and one market, China, an out of control immigration system resulting in excessive net migration, a worsening housing crisis and the list goes on. And if that member thinks it's a load of rubbish, he should ask the people of New Zealand because they think those issues are much more, much more important than a new flag for this country. And you only have to ask him to find that out. The government, Mr Speaker, has appointed a flag consideration panel, which it is paying at a rate of, I understand, somewhere between $600 and $800 per day for the purpose of, and I quote, to lead public engagement and to recommend alternative flag designs for New Zealanders to consider through referendum, unquote. But this is not just a waste of millions of dollars of, of public money for no public benefit, but in fact New Zealanders won't really get to make the decision at all, because they will only have presented to them four options actually decided by others. And the whole process is being so rushed that it's clear that the government wants to make sure this is done before the next election for some reason. Maybe as John Key's legacy to New Zealand after he loses that election. Oh. Mr Speaker, and we'll, and we'll soon see, and we'll soon see, and the first step of that will be when the government loses the Northland by-election in a few days' time. Mr Speaker, the bill establishes a process for the holding of two postal referendums, the first to determine which alternative flag design is preferred from only four alternatives, and the second to determine whether that alternative or the current flag should be the New Zealand flag on the, uh, and, and uh, that's the final part of the referendum. So two referendums effectively. If the voters decide in the second re uh, referendum that the flag is to change, then legislation to actually put that into effect would have to follow. Now, Mr Speaker, while New Zealand First is usually in favour of referendums of this kind, matters which the people should decide. As I've already said on this occasion, the people will not in these referendums actually be siding themselves because the government has got it the wrong way round. Before spending of millions of dollars on the two referendums planned, there should only be one referendum before the expense of any panels are appointed or other expenses are incurred. And the referendum the one referendum should start out by simply asking a simple question, do you want a new, flag, a new national flag to replace the current one? That's all we need to ask for a start. That should be the question. That's the primary question, and that's the one that's being asked second in these two referendums, and it should be first. 
and only if the answer was yes should we spend money on taking the matter any further. In actual fact, as Phil Goff has said, you could in fact have both questions asked in one referendum, but this government wants a double diversion and to double the costs. How silly can you get? The process set out in this bill appears to be a way of the government rigging the result, actually influencing the, the public and, and making sure that the public do what the government says. I don't think they will anyway, but this is what the government is trying to do. They are trying to preempt the real question, which is, do New Zealanders want a, a new flag or not, by producing four that other people have chosen to be thrust upon New Zealanders. It's a back-to-front process. It's a blatant means of trying to influence the result. It is trickery, but Kiwis will see through it. It's transparently clear that the government and Mr Key are out of touch with what Kiwis want. This is not what they want. There are a lot of things they do, as I've said, but this is not anywhere near a priority for the great majority of New Zealanders. In addition to that, no detailed information is being given to people about the full costs. Because, Mr Speaker, the, the first $26, $26 million will be just the beginning. There will be many, many more costs amounting to tens of millions of dollars after that because we will need to not just change flags on official places, also all military flags at embassies and overseas and for the armed forces, but many other costs of official publications and emblems, even driver's licence, and especially passports, will have to be changed to catch up with the changes. So the real costs have not been identified and are huge. Those costs, that money is better spent elsewhere, on new homes, on education, on better health services, including, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First's new bill to give super gold card holders three free doctor's visits per year. The people who will get that would much rather have it than a new flag, I'm sure. But there is also another very important reason for us to oppose this bill, and this is that it will betray the men and women who fought and died under this flag, our flag, in many wars. 100,000 men went to the First World War from New Zealand, and 18,000 of them died, not under the flag, as one speaker said, but buried under the flag. And the respect which the current flag has generates throughout the world will be lost because the new flag will take decades upon decades to even be recognised. Right. Mr Speaker, our current flag is rooted in history, and that history needs to be respected and preserved. We need not adopt some fad, the fad of design this year or next year for New Zealand's flag. We have a wonderful flag which is respected, which is recognised, and which is New Zealand's flag. It doesn't need redesigning. Everybody knows it. Everybody respects it. What else could you possibly want from a flag? What are we going to gain from a new one? Apart from the expenditure of a lot of money just to make one party feel better, to try and divert people from the real issues. Mr Speaker, this is, a, this is not just a flag of historical significance as it will become if this bill is passed, because that's what it says it will do, it will, it will really mean that this flag will be lost to us forever. Mr Speaker, there is no genuine or significant public pressure for this change of flag, nor the flawed process to be followed. And instead, there is much more important constitutional issues for us to be looking at, such as Maori seats, a written constitution, the size of parliament and the size of electorates, the length of the parliamentary term, Maori electoral option and participation, and the role of the Treaty of Waitangi. Those are all genuine constitutional matters which are urgent. But what is the government doing about them? All it said as a result of the recent review is let the conversation continue. In other words, let's do nothing about all of that. Instead, let's have a diversion just to change the flag. And Mr Speaker, that's not good enough and New Zealand First will not countenance it.